Nice work, nice work, some of you. Some of you have really good rhythm. Others of you were just like, ah. That's all right. We're having some fun here today. Now, public service announcement. I got to talk to you for a little bit, so let's take those instruments, put them underneath the chair, and try to keep our hands off of them until we're done. Uh, we got a lot of great things going on today. My name is Anthony. For those of you who don't know me, uh, we are kicking off a brand new series called Remix. Uh, and listen, if this is your first time walking into a church ever or in a while, you're probably like, what is going on? All right, we've got, we're giving you instruments, we've got a DJ, uh, we got Dance Dance Revolution in the lobby, there's Haze. I gotta be honest, I, I normally can't see you because of how bright the lights are, but with this Haze, it's a whole new level, I have no idea who's out there, so uh, it's a foggy day in Hoboken Grace, but that's okay, because we're celebrating, right, it's a brand new, it's a brand new series, it's summer, right, and, and we're doing this for a number of reasons, but yes, the number one is, you know, one of the reasons is that it is summer. It's time to celebrate. It's time to, 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 to you know, to, to relax a little bit and to learn new things. But the other thing is, is that, you know, I think, if we're honest, we've lost a little bit of the celebration, a little bit of the fun when it comes to this word, church, right? I mean, First and foremost, this isn't your traditional church building, right? It's, it's, most of you have showed up for the first time, you're like, it's a school, there's hoops, what's going on, right? But then there's also the, the, the truth of the reality that the church was never meant to be a building. The church is, is a body of believers, right? And, 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 and at the core, right, when we think of this word church, though, nowadays, we don't really associate the word fun with it. We don't really associate the word celebration with it. We don't really associate the word makes me want to dance when I go and think about church. If we're honest, typically, when we think about church in the, this culture, day and age, what are the words that come to mind? Boring, old-fashioned, out of touch, judgmental. It's less like a DJ and a club, but more like a polka party. I don't know. <laughs> so what happened? I mean, is this, is this what God intended? I mean, the church has been around for thousands of, uh, thousands of years, and some would say, you know what, it hasn't really aged all that well. And what if we missed something along the way? I mean... If you've been around church for a while or, you know, uh, you know maybe just heard church, you've probably heard that this, this message of Jesus Christ, right, it's supposed to be the greatest message ever. It's supposed to be the greatest news ever heard, right? And if it is such good news, why aren't more people reacting to it that way? Why aren't we as the church reacting to it that way? Why don't we respond to it that way? That if this, the, the message of Jesus Christ from the beginning was meant to change the world, and it has, and yet it has been taken in directions that it was never desired to go. And, and listen, I'm, I'm not speaking as this just from, you know, just from the stage. I mean, I, I understand this from a firsthand experience. And listen, maybe your story is like my story because well, I, my, my, my parents, they brought me to church as a kid. And, and if I have to be honest, which I am, I hated it. I was bored out of my mind. And, and, and you know, and, and, and finally, when I remember when my parents took away my coloring pages and told me I had to pay attention. I have always churches where I went to color. So now I have to pay attention to this guy. And listen nothing against him but 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 he was boring and he always looked angry even when he was smiling you ever met anybody like that they're like hey and you're like oh that guy's got something in his trunk um uh, you know like he's a little a little frightening but you know it was just it was just i didn't understand it i didn't understand why i, I needed to go there i didn't understand if this was such good news why why did he look like it was awful you know and as i grew up I kept thinking about this good news, like, like why? Why, why, why is this something that, that I should even care about? 
And to take things, you know, a step further, because I clearly was excited about going to church on Sundays, my parents thought, why not bring him to church three more days during the week? That's a great idea. And, and I remember that it was here that I would get my first picture of who God was. It was here that they would paint an image of God for me. And this image is something that I would carry for the next decade plus. And I remember the conversation. I, I was kind of a mischievous kid, as, as I'm sure you're not surprised to hear, but I loved making people laugh. And, and this one particular day, I, I, was, I, was, I was wearing a, a Billabong shirt. You remember Billabong? Because, you know, clearly I was a surfer. And because uh, and, uh, there was all those waves in the landlocked state of Colorado that I grew up in. Um, and uh, I just thought I was being cool and all that good stuff. And, uh, and, then, and, and, and then the teacher said, why are you wearing a shirt with drug paraphernalia? And I was like, you don't know what you're talking about. I mean, it was Colorado, so she, pro she had a point. Um, but she took me out and she, you know, she said, hey, you know, we, should, we should probably talk about talking back to me and all that stuff. And I said, I'm sorry. And she said, you know what? Here's what you need to know. God likes mischievous children. And I said, oh, good. She said, but here's something you need to know. And I remember, I remember standing in that hallway. I remember where we were. I remember what she looked like. And I remember what she told me. She said, Anthony, every time you do something right, you receive something that's called a grace. And the more graces you receive, the closer to God you get. The more graces you receive, the closer to heaven you get. Now, I know now that that isn't true, but when I was seven, that's how I began my picture of God. Now let me pause right there because some of you, the way that I was talking just now, that's your view of God. Some of you heard me said that and, and, and you, you, you've been taught that too. You think that you have to earn these graces in order to get into God's good graces. And well, imagine seven-year-old Anthony, right? I mean, why, 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 why would she lie to me? I mean, we're in church after all. And I truly believe that she believed this, and I truly believe that she didn't mean any harm. But this picture is how I would interact with God. This would be my view of God. This would be my picture of God up until graduate school. It all was based on how good I was. And I just spent my entire, you know, childhood years throughout high school into college believing that that's how God interacted with me. Based on how good I was. And I was hoping that my good would outweigh my bad. So he was like some sort of, you know, Santa Claus in the sky. And, 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 and it just got me so, it just got me so worked up that, because how could I know? How could I know what I was doing? Right? It's not like a book that I could check to see if my goods were outweighing my bads. This was before the internet, so it's not like I could log onto a website and say, oh, I need to start doing some more goods. No, I mean, this is, this is, this is how I interacted with God. This is how I thought he was. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't know if I want anything to do with this God. I don't know if I want anything to do with this thing called church. If this is, if this is the good news, if this is the way church is perceived I, I don't know if i want anything to do with that and listen no matter where you are on this journey no matter what it was like for you uh, maybe you have a different view of who god is or, or because of the way that you were raised or how you were introduced with god maybe maybe you have a different picture of who god is in your life and so i wonder sometimes where did we get it wrong because this is supposed to be the best news that we've heard of all time this news that was initially communicated to people that that, that people literally celebrated that people literally it, it changed the world when people heard the new the good news of jesus christ for the very first time nations were changed people were changed communities were changed people never heard this before and people were coming to know god in in incredible incredible ways and 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 and, and where did we go wrong and i suppose like any movement like any good thing that's on this path it's time to go back 
to the beginning. It's time to go back to the source. And maybe, maybe if we're honest, maybe we're just victims of one really long game of telephone, right? Remember that? Somebody says something at the beginning and, and, and then you whisper into that person's ear and then you whisper into that person's ear and at the end you hear what initially is usually something very different than what that person initially said. You know, like this person says the baker made um, an apple pie and then you said like your face wants to make me cry or something like that and everybody laughs like, ha that's great. But I think there's a really true point that we can pull from this, this game and, 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 and I think it's best to get the information right from the source. Because even through good intentions, and and like I said, I believe she had good intentions, except for some of you who were those kids that intentionally screwed it up, you know who you were. That, that, That it's important to remember that we have to go back to the source. So that's what we're gonna do. That's what this... This series is all about. We're going to go back to the source. We're going to find out what it was that made this message of Jesus Christ so attractive. What, what, it, that, what, what, what was it that made it so special? How did it survive thousands and thousands of years? In fact, we're going to go back to the source uh, that, that Hoboken Grace was founded on. Actually, back in 2007, uh, Hoboken Grace, I mean, we actually weren't even called Hoboken Grace. We were called the Church at Hoboken because in 2007 we were really creative. Um, and... And we had, a mesh, we had a mission, and it's the same mission, right? It's God's mission. Our mission hasn't changed, even though our name has changed. Our mission has always been to help people find their way back to God. And this, this, this mission is not just some, something we saw. They said, oh, that sounds good. That, that should be our mission. No, it's actually God's ultimate mission, but it's pulled from this verse that's found in Acts 17, 27. And it says his purpose, that's God's purpose. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him though he is not far from any one of us. And now what better way to pull from what the church was meant to be, to pull from what the beginning of the church was all about, right? To find out what the beginning of the church was all about, to go into the book of Acts, which is actually about the launch of this thing called the church. But the question is, how? What if, what if your view of God is so skewed? What happens if you have no desire to return to God because of the way somebody painted it for you. So that's why we call this series a remix. What's a remix? It's returning to something. It's giving it another look. It's not creating anything new, right? It's returning to something to give it fresh eyes, a new beat, which, which truth be told, some of us need it right now, right? Our faith, our view of God needs to be remixed. He hasn't changed, but maybe your view of him needs to right that's what that verse says though he is not far from any one of us he has never moved though some of us have see when we begin hoboken grace we begin to look at what god was calling this thing to called the church to be who were we as the church this body of believers to be and so we looked we saw that there were really about six core values that we were going to build god's church on right if you go through the book of acts and you go through what god meant the church now core values core values are fundamental beliefs these are these are what we believe at the core that god is calling us to do at the core of what god is calling us to accomplish and now right we might know that the mission here at hoboken grace is to help people find their way back to god but what you might not know is that there's a direct cut to that right there's an extended version it's to help people find their way back to god by how experiencing god's grace growing in god's grace demonstrating god's grace and sharing god's grace now seven-year-old anthony might have looked at this and say whoa whoa, whoa. where's earning god's grace and in fact we felt so strongly that at the center of god's story is, is this thing called grace that we changed our name and we made it our very first core value. That's why we're now Hoboken Grace because it's at the center of God's story with his people. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Anthony. I thought you said based on when you were growing up, you had to earn God's grace. You see, that's when seven-year-old Anthony should have done a remix. That's when seven-year-old Anthony should have returned to the source of that grace because it didn't sound right to me. It didn't feel right to me, right? 
If something doesn't feel right, if something doesn't fit right, we take it back to the source. We take it back to the store in which we got it from, unless you return it to Walmart, in which case you can return anything to Walmart. But if we understand that, right? If, we, if, if, if something doesn't sound right, we have to go back to the source to find out what that is. If somebody says, hey, so-and-so said something about you, Anthony, and I go up to so-and-so and I say, what did you say about me, punk, right? They are going to tell me, hopefully, what they actually said. It's important to go back to the source. And it's interesting because when we're, we're, you know, we, we hear of this thing, and, but we're also told of a loving God, and we're told of a, a God that we should call Father, but do we need to earn the love of the Father? And, and listen, I know some of us you know, grew up with an earthly father, and we felt that way, so it's hard to see God the Father in that light or see Him as anything different. But again, there's just another view of somehow someone painted a picture of who God is to you. But there's just something about that that doesn't seem right. In fact, this has been going on for years. In fact, about 30 seconds after the church launched, people started to make up rules. In fact, there's a book in the New Testament, a letter that Paul wrote to the churches in Galatia. And, and he, he, he's writing this, this letter to the church in Galatia because initially... The church in Galatia, all the churches that were popping up in Galatia were, were, were doing great. They, they, they remembered the message of Jesus Christ. They were telling people about it. And churches were popping up all over the place because people were responding and understanding and celebrating this incredible message of God, that God had sent his son, Jesus Christ, to rescue us. It didn't matter. And at this time, there were so many different class systems and caste systems. And for the first time, Jesus comes and he levels the playing field. He says, I don't care if you're Jew, what if you're Gentile, if you're slave, if you're servant, whoever you are, you are all on the same level. You are all been pursued by God. And Jesus came to die for you. And people were going went absolutely nuts. And then about 40 years later, right? So this is just to show you how, how close from when Jesus actually walked the earth that people started to screw this up. About 40 years later, these people started to come into Galatia and were like, yeah, that Jesus guy, he's good and all, but you should probably also do this. And you should probably also do that. Yeah, Jesus is fine, but you should also do this to get in good graces with God. And the Galatians were like, really? And they had heard it enough, and they had heard it enough, and they'd heard it enough to be like, oh, okay. So Jesus, Jesus, okay, Jesus is good, but we also have to do this. And we also have to do this. And word travels to Paul, and, and, and they find out how these churches are starting to be run, that now they're putting all these rules and regulations on, 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 on top of God's grace. And Paul's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I need to get there fast, but because I can't get there real quick, I'm going to send them a letter. And so he sends them a letter and to, to, kind of, to kind of, you know, remind them of the source, remind them, remix their faith, give them the view of who God was and what had happened. So right off in Galatians 1, verse 1, he says, Paul, an apostle, just so you know, this is not going to be like, dear Galatians, no, 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 we got to get to the point. It's Paul, I'm an apostle. I'm sent from men, sent not from men, nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And all the brothers and sisters with me. So this message is coming at you. To the churches in Galatia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God the Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go back to verse 3. It says, grace and peace to you from God our Father. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. Wait. Who gave himself for our sins to rescue us. Grace and peace are connected to this gift from Jesus. Jesus. Grace and peace come together because of a gift. See, throughout the New Testament, you start to understand that this grace thing, this, this gift that God gave us, is not something that we can earn. Grace and peace from you, from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who earned your favor. No, it says, who gave him 
self. So what is this grace? And as you, you, you dig through the scriptures and you find you know, what this grace means and even start to see what the Greek translation means and all that stuff, a, a, a solid definition of what this, this grace thing is, is grace is unmerited, undeserved, unearned kindness and favor of God. So as you saw in that verse to Galatians, he's like, listen, grace and peace to you. Because remember, this is something that was given to you. This is unmerited. It's definitely undeserved. You did nothing to earn this. There's nothing on your own merit, right? And it is unearned kindness and favor of God. Let me show you an example of grace. Here's a $20 bill, right? There you go. You're very welcome. She didn't do anything to earn that. The thing she did is she sat up close and I didn't want to go far. Maybe some of y'all won't sit in the back anymore. (laughs) But she didn't earn it. Right? She didn't earn it. That's what I'm trying to say. It's unmerited. It's undeserved. It's unearned. Kindness and favor of God. God looked at you and said, no, there's nothing you can do to deserve this. There's nothing you can do to deserve it. There's nothing you can do to earn this. There's also nothing you can do to lose it. I love you. And I am going to give this to you. All the junk that you've ever done, everything that you've ever, that you could never make up for, I'm going to give of my son to pay for it. (laughs) Wait, wait a minute, Anthony. That's good. That's good. Everything I've ever done, because I've done some pretty messed up stuff. You're just going to, he's just going to forgive all that? Because, you know, for us in this culture, it just doesn't, we, we, we should pay for that, right? We're like, no, 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 no. Let me do that, right? Because it feels good that we should, that we should make up for that, Right? But as he said to the Galatians, he said he gave himself for our sins. We didn't earn it. He gave it to us. And the key here is where he says grace and peace to you. See, if you don't understand this grace of God, you'll be spending your whole life, like I did, going, God, am I good enough? Are we cool? Have I earned enough graces to get into your good graces? Have I earned enough graces to get into heaven? I'm... Let me tell you, there's no peace in that. And the reason that Paul said grace and peace to you is because peace is the result of salvation and grace is the cause of that. When you know that you and God are good, there is a peace that comes of it and it's because of the grace that comes through salvation. Peace is the result of salvation and grace is the cause of it. Because of the grace of God, you are saved and as a result, you have this peace. And it's Jesus who gave that to you. Because of Jesus, because of the gospel, the good news of Jesus, we have grace. Look what it says in John 1, 16 through 17. It says, uh, out of his fullness, we all have received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and peace, grace and truth All of this came to you through Jesus Christ. It's not something to earn. Why? Because it's already been given. You can't earn it. And you could never earn it anyway. Not only that, when he says, I give you my spirit for the rest of your life so you can become more and more like my son. Why did I do that for you? You didn't do anything but believe. Look at what it says in 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says, God made him who had no sin, that's Jesus, God made Jesus who had no sin to be sin. He took on your sin, those things that you're struggling to let go of, those things you say, oh, God could never love me. He took on those things to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We, that's the royal we, might become the righteousness of God. What does that righteousness mean? Righteousness means being justified before God. 
Because of what Jesus did, you have been justified. You have been made right with God. Because of Jesus, who took on our sin, we have been made right. We cool. Thank you. <laughs> One guy got my joke. I'll give you $20 next. <laughs> Romans 3 says this. Romans 3 says, The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. All right? To all who believe. It doesn't say the righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to those who are doing good deeds. It doesn't say the righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to those whose goods outweigh their bads. You know why? Because there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. There is no difference. For all have fallen short of the glory of God and all are justified. What? There's the word we love. Freely by His grace through the redemption that came by you. No, that came by Christ Jesus. It is a yes, it is a free gift from His grace through the redemption that came through Christ Jesus. What do you need to do? Okay, you really want to do something? Believe in Jesus. That's all you have to do. Believe that Jesus is the one who came to take all of that stuff that you're holding on to. All of those things that you think you need to pay for, all of those things that I carried around for years after years after years, I'll never forget. After I came to know God when I was in graduate school, I kept trying to make up for these things. I kept trying to pay for these things. I kept trying to, to suffer. And I remember one time the pastor said to me, Anthony, why are you diminishing what Jesus Christ did on the cross? It's been done. Why are you trying to pay for what's already been paid for? You are justified freely by his grace because Jesus did it, not because of you. You believe that Jesus Christ came to pay for those things that you think you could never be forgiven for. You believe that Jesus Christ is the only one who could pay for those things that you and I have done that you think make God angry at you. He says, no, listen, listen. I, he says, when you have faith in Jesus Christ, not only are all those things that you've done and those things you're going to do going to be paid, you are made righteous. You are justified by your faith. Not because of anything that you've done, but because of what Jesus Christ did for you. Now, what happens? What happens when we try to earn God's favor, right? Well, that's exactly what the Galatians were trying to do, right? They were trying to earn God's favor. They'd understand God's free gift. They were walking into this relationship with him. They were believers, but they were trying to add on to it. And so Paul continues in his letter in the Galatians. He said, I'm astonished. What are you guys doing? That you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Remember, gospel is good news, which is really no good news at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into the confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. Paul looks at him and says, what are you doing? Why are you adding all this stuff? You know the truth. So many of us live like this, right? We, we know, we understand this, and then it says, I'm going to go try and do something different. He says, why would you do this? I'm amazed. And I love that he says that. He says, he says when you do this, you're actually deserting him. When you think you can earn your way into God's favor, you're actually deserting the very one who gave you the ability to be there in the first place. That's like offering to pick up the check after some dude's already paid for it. You're just insulting the one who just picked up the check. You see, many people in this world say, you know, I want to do a bunch of good things because it makes me feel better about myself, and I think God will think more highly of me. And, and I know I, I thought I did. I was doing that. And I thought, that's what I was taught, right? I mean, if I do good works, I'm going to get into heaven. And at first glance, that seems somewhat noble. Well, Anthony, what's wrong? I mean, he wants to do a bunch of good things, so at the end of his life, he can say, look at what I did. What's wrong with a nice person doing good works and earning their way into heaven? The problem is, is that it puts all its focus on you. You're like, hey, look what I did. I earned this. But it says, that's really no gospel at all. The gospel is not, that, that's not good news at all. He says you left the good news for bad news. Because let me tell you something. It is terrible. It is a terrible life living to think that you can earn God's favor. I did it for a large portion of my life. And it started after I talked to that lady. 
Because I remember being in third grade and I remember being scared of death. Ask my parents. I used to cry myself. I used to wake up and say, Mom, I'm scared of dying. And she would be like, why? And I was like, because I don't know if I've got enough goods. I don't know if I've got enough goods to outweigh my bads. A third grader shouldn't be dealing with that. That's not peace. There's no peace in that. My parents would have to calm me down sometimes daily. Is that good news? No, that's another. That's, that's, that's what he says. That's, that's, that's really no gospel at all. That's really no good news at all. Some of you have no peace about your relationship with God at all. Why? Because you think you have to earn it. And what happens when we live that way? He says we're believing a false gospel. Galatians 1, he continues in 8, verse 8, he says, but even, even if we, he's talking about himself, he's talking about all the brothers and sisters that are with him, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one that we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. And then he says, basically he says this, I don't know if you heard me, so I'm going to say it again. So now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Paul, those are some harsh words. I'm just telling you, he needed to repeat himself. If anybody, if I came up here next week and was like, I know what I told you last week, but he said, let him be under God's curse. If someone takes the focus off of Jesus Christ and tells them that you can earn God's favor, then you know what? Let them be under God's curse. You know why? Because he realized this, and it's something that I realized, that it was the false gospel that pushed me away from God, but it was the true gospel that brought me right back to him. And that's how we help people find their way back to God, by understanding his grace, is that we point him towards the true good news of Jesus Christ. And that's how people find their way back to him. Because when I was in graduate school, I heard the message from someone who gave a message that said, you know what, grace is unmerited favor. He said that the word grace appears in the New Testament over 170 times. He says it's not something that can be bought and that you will never find peace if you don't embrace the grace of God. Because when you embrace the grace of God, you will no longer wonder. But until you do, until you do that, you're never going to be at peace. And you'll always wonder where, because nowhere on the planet does there exist a list from God that says, here's how you behave to get into my good graces. Trust me, for a number of years, I looked for one. I mean, even if you've never been to church before, you've been to church for a little bit, you've all heard Amazing Grace. And I think the reason why we sing Amazing Grace, because when you look at it this way, it is pretty amazing. And the less amazing you've been, the more amazing it sounds, doesn't it? And the less likely you'll ever deserve that kind of grace, the the, the, the more that you realize that that it is undeserved, that it is, there's nothing I can do, the more amazing it becomes for you. And Paul understood this. Paul had done a lot of bad, bad stuff. By the world's standards, Paul was a bad dude. And Paul understood this and he tasted this and he experienced God's grace to the fullness that he he wrote about it and he continued to write about it. And he said, you have to understand this. This is what he says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. He says, but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace, only by God's grace that you have been saved For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms. Because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as example of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us. As shown all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Here's a great line. God saved you by his grace when you 
believed. And guess what? You cannot take credit for it. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. It is a gift from God. Jesus died to make it a reality. And everybody after Jesus looked back and said it's because of Christ's death on the cross. And that we know that God loves us. That anything we do... Any good thing that we do after that is just a response and an expression of gratitude for all that he's done. We don't earn it. We don't bargain with it. We don't trade with it. We just say in the light of everything we, you've done for me, I stand here in awe and surrender to you. So where are you? Where are you today? Are you, are you experiencing God's grace? Are you growing in God's grace? Are you sharing God's grace? Or are you trying to earn God's grace? That's why, if we're honest with each other, wherever you are, I think our faith could use a remix. And over the next few weeks, we're going to keep going back to what God intended. We're going to keep going back to what God intended us to do as the church and not what we intended when we took the reins. It's not about us. It's about what he has already done. And we understand that God accepted us not because of what we have done, but what Jesus Christ did. And when we understand that, when we have the peace, when we understand that God, you and I are good, you have done so much for me and everything that I do is a result of of, 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 of the expressness of gratitude and everything that you've done, that should cause us to celebrate. That should cause us to want to tell other people about us. That should cause us to want to dance. That's what it means. That's the message from the beginning to say, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been, that God is pursuing you. He wants you and he cannot wait to celebrate you. And he cannot wait to use you to bring other people back to him. That's the message. And that's what he wants us to get to understand when it comes to this incredible thing of grace. I'm going to invite the band back up here. And during this next song, I just want to invite you to use this next song as a response to him. For this grace that you've received, for this freedom, for this peace that's, that's been given to you. I just want you to say, God, in light of all that, that, that you've done for me, I sing this to you. I surrender this to you. And if you are here today and you are still struggling with this and you're still holding on to that thing, those, those things that you've done or those things that you believe that God could never accept you for or God could never love you for, I'm here to tell you. And, and the reason that you're listening to this, the reason that you're here today, the reason that you're tuned in online or the reason that you're listening on the podcast is true. He wants you to hear this. He wants to know that he loves you because you know what? Even if you've never been to church, I guarantee you, you've heard this first. So God so loved what the world and he's including you in that, that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. He's talking to you and he wants you to walk into this relationship with him. To know that he is worth celebrating, that this life is worth dancing, and there's peace in knowing that God the Father, God the Creator, is so in love with you. And that alone should cause us to want to dance. Will you pray with me? Father, oh man, I feel like we could spend just days and hours and, and, and we would still never get the incredible amazing power of grace. Father, Father, we uh, thank you seems too small. Thank you seems so minuscule into what you have given to us. That there's nothing we could do, that there's nothing we could do to earn it. That you, not only did you create us, and not only did we turn our backs on you, but you never turned your back on us. And you kept pursuing us, pursuing us, pursuing us. Because you are so rich in mercy, so rich in grace, that you cannot wait to bring more and more people back to you. And so, Father, we thank you. And if those who are here today, God, that are, that are struggling with this, I pray that, they will, that you will just soften their hearts to make them realize that, yes, you love them, you're pursuing them, and you cannot wait to use them. Help them to taste that grace so we can begin experiencing it, demonstrating it, and sharing it. It's all because of Jesus.
It's only possible because of him. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Would you stand and sing with us as we respond to his incredible grace together? I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. Well, I was breathing. Can have a seat. Couple of things to let you know about. Number one, just a reminder: our summer collection is next week. As you walk out, there are cards out there. Feel free to grab them, uh, and we'll be able to uh, really love our local partners that way, and really just uh, just love the community well 
around that. Now listen, if you're wrestling through something and maybe you need somebody to, to pray with you or you're, you're working through something today, our elders will be available right after the service and they'd love to pray with you, pray for you. Uh, and last but not least, I just want to encourage you today, as we go throughout the summer, we're going to be engaging in all these core fundamental truths about who God is, what he's done, and maybe in, there's been somebody in your heart that you've been, you know, saying, you know, somebody really needs to hear this. There's it was my neighbor, my coworker, or a friend. I just want to encourage you, invite them to come back. We're going to be having fun with this remix series all summer long. And then just may we, as we go out today, just go out celebrating celebrating a God who no matter what continues to pursue us, to shower us in his grace and that we can go out and share that with others and bring more people back to him. We'll see you next week, guys. Have a great week.